Welcome. 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 To the Performer Radio Show. Each week, we interview some of the most interesting people in the fashion and entertainment industries. Fa- fa- fashion and entertainment industries. Beautiful models, singers, comedians, dancers, fashion designers, actors, beauty queens, and many more. And many more. And many more. Right here. Right here. On the Performer Radio Show. Okay, another <laughs> another crazy start to our night here. We're running a little bit late uh, due to technical difficulties, and you can saw you just saw a couple of them right there. Good good evening, Jules. Hi. How are you? How are you doing? It's good to see you. Nice to see you too. How how, how have things been for you? I can't complain. I, this this girl. Every time I turn on Facebook, all right. Um, she's a golf nut now. I am. When did you start? Like about seven or eight months ago? Um, in June. In June. I okay. made a DIY putting green in my apartment. Right. I got this is COVID and I was bored and I fell in love ever since. And um, we've been seeing you outdoors shooting at a, well, a couple local ranges now yes. in the middle of winter. I mean, you just can't get enough of this. I, I love it. It makes me so happy, and I'm so thankful <laughs> the Rangers are open for me. Yeah, I, 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 I found that really quite interesting. I, I can understand maybe a 40-degree day or something like that. But you're out there with all the snow. And, and what 20s. happens? I mean, you're going to lose all your balls in the snow, right? Uh, um, I, I, I do lose the balls in the snow, yes. Okay. <laughs> but so some, must... some Rangers have yellow and orange balls, so you okay. can see them. So. But you still have to go out in the snow and get them. So. Actually, I don't. Oh, you don't? Somebody does it the for range, you? Okay. The range keepers. Oh, okay. That's not so bad. What the name you All right. Call so it. I, I want to bring in our, our the co-host, co-host, Mike. How are you doing tonight? Hey, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Glad yeah? to be here. How was your weekend? How was Valentine's for you? It was actually really good. I saw, yeah, I saw your post with yeah, your girlfriend. We that had some nice. fun. You know, we very had a good nice. time. Thanks. Thanks. Yes. I like how you asked the non-single person. How well, I, I I already know how our weekend was. Listen. <laughs> listen. <laughs> all, all I can say is that it was it was fun. That's and awesome. And we got to we got to hang out, stay in. We made dinner together. And Very nice. Yeah, it was just a just a good a good night. And it was my birthday as well. Happy! So, wow, I didn't even know that, Mike. Happy yeah, birthday! Thanks. So I you got a, oh, you're a February birthday like me. I am. I'm oh, does it suck? <laughs> it's terrible. You can't plan anything. I know. That's exactly you right. Plan August anything. baby here. Summertime. Yeah, yeah we hate you. So that's love very. You too. <laughs> I mean, every time I, I would love to have a cookout on my birthday. I'll have to move to. I'll, Mike, we have to go down to Australia <laughs> that's for our it. birthday. We got to go. Okay, we, I mean, that's it. We've tried planning something for you. Three I know. Three times now. Three times now. <laughs> it's been canceled every Three time. Three times. The, the snow, it just it's it's crazy. Just keeps coming. What can you do? Celebrate in August with me. It's okay. Yeah. I, hey. Actually, you were working. I saw you. you know weren't you working? Uh, no, it's not Sunday night. You weren't. You're working late one night. I was like, why is he working? Oh, I work all the time. I, I love what I do. I'm just 830 at night. I'll still be working. And playing basketball in the office. Yeah, well, it's, nice. it's she got this thing. She just she competes against herself I constantly. I do behind my head. It's some right. skills. You, you've started to be the Michael Jordan of what? They, what kind of what, the office basketball? Office ball. Uh, office, office ball. Office hoops. I call office it. Office hoops. hoops. There you go. Yeah. All right. Like well, we got some great uh, guests coming up tonight. Uh, we got um, this guy named Steve Blackwood. Uh, Steve has uh, put out a couple of great short films recently, uh, hitting the uh, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the festival circuit. And we'll talk about that. But Steve has a great, great background in acting for many, many years. We'll say decades at this point. And we'll talk about that, too. I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag later. And then later on, we've got uh, reporter Tim uh, Estilos. Is that how you pronounce it? I, I think Estilos. Uh, I'll get the right pronouncement later. I should have asked that before we <laughs> went on. But I was so busy doing everything else. So, uh, But Estilos, I think that's how you pronounce it. And we'll be talking to him about some of the stuff he's done in the past. So, and he does a little acting, too. And I'll, I'll talk, talk to you about his latest uh, movie that's out right now, which is a big one. I saw it, and I loved it. So uh, we'll be back after these messages, and I'm going to find out what's wrong with my camera because it keeps going in and out of focus. And dark, I say I might go dark to light, dark to light. Uh, and then uh, we'll be back with our first guest, Steve. So stay tuned. Oh. Well done, my friend. I've been practicing. You know, blackberry hint water tastes more like fresh blackberries than the blackberries in my pie. Really? Yeah. Taste for yourself. I believe I will. And? Oh. Delicious. Just blackberries, <laughs> no sugary stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, my cherry hint water tastes more like cherries than the ones in my pie. I'll be the judge of that. Mm. 
You're right. Cherry Hint water tastes more like cherries, not like that sugary cherry stuff in your pie. Seems impossible. We should double check. Hint, water with a touch of true fruit flavor. STEM is the discipline of hard numbers. Precise, no margin for error. Dare to forget that. Dare to have fun with it. Get weird with it. Dare to get messy or just mess it up. Dare to program something internet breaking, record breaking. Dare to blow their minds. Dare to try, dare to fail. Dare to keep daring. Science! Dare to learn the difference between organic sedimentary and non-foliated metamorphic rock. Get outside, find those rocks. Dare to be homeroom famous, a high school fable. Dare to send those old STEM theories flying past the neighbor's house into outer space. And for the love of STEM, <laughs> dare bigger. Dare to code, dare to invent, dare to explore, dare to STEM. Check out She Can STEM to get started. Don't give a time to reload it. Don't pull the rules to it. Just wanna turn all the way up Every night, hey, hey, hey What you gonna do with your life? Do with your life Whatever I want, whatever I want Whatever I want, whatever I want Whatever I want Okay, we're back again, and uh, I want to introduce our first guest, Steve Blackwood. Steve, welcome to Performer. How are you? I'm doing very well. Hey, guys. Hey, Michael. Good to see you. Uh, so there's this Ms. Michael, and there's that Michael, and that's Jules over there. So now you, you've been introduced. We had to connect to Steve pretty quickly because we had a little, few connection problems earlier. So, Steve, welcome to uh, Performer and Performer Radio. Uh, how, how are you doing tonight? Whoops. You muted someone. Um, Go ahead. I'm, I'm doing really, really well. I'm really excited about this show. Um, I've heard about you, Michael, and the fashion and all that. It's just it's just thrilled to be, to be on your on Okay, great. We're having, uh, could you talk a little closer to your mic, Steve? Maybe because the, the volume's a little bit low, whereas we're talking about. I heard about the fashion. How's that? Go ahead. How, how's this? Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's a little better. Okay. So, Steve, uh, you have been uh, an actor for many, many years, correct? Mm-hmm. That's okay. right. I was, uh, I've, been, I've been an actor for 40 years. 40 years. And I was on Day Fives. Yeah. Shh, don't talk. Okay, so yeah. days of our lives. Now I, I, t I took, I checked you up on IMDb, seven hundred and ninety nine right. episodes. Right, I was so close to eight hundred. I was going to say, why couldn't they just give you one cameo for number eight hundred? You know, when they killed me off, my mother cried. Oh. She oh, cried. Really? So did I because I lost my, my job, mm. my permanent. Mm. Job. Do you know what I mean? How many years? No, that was a joke. How many, how many years did that translate to overall? Uh, ten. Ten years. Yeah. Yeah. And in, in certain years, I was a regular. In certain years, I, I started off as a henchman, uh, a yes man for Stefano, the, the evil villain on the show, Joe Mascolo. And then um, what happened was uh, I started to add some humor to the, to the part. And uh, uh, I became like a Peter Sellers henchman, if you will. Someone who he'd say, go shoot somebody. And I'd say, well, where's the gun? Mm -hmm. I don't know where the gun is. See how funny that is? And, um, <laughs> and so, so what happened was the temp job ended up being 10 years. So I went wow. from, from temp to perm. Um, but, but if I did it their way, I would have just said, yes, sir, no, sir, and kill the guy, and that's it. But I, I added a dimension to the bad guy, to the henchman. I added, uh, you know, sort of a, a funny, not the sharpest knife in the blade uh, in the drawers, the guy, you know. So that's that was that was what I did, and you and I tell my actors, I'm an acting teacher as well. You got to bring your strengths to the part, and you'll be able to like last longer, because if you know if you're going to do it their way all the time, and be a good little actor, that's okay. But you but you know you got to personalize the role, and I, I talk about that in my acting classes. That's pretty cool. Now, you don't really think of soaps as being humorous uh, very often. I mean, I, I don't remember any anything that was 
That, I mean, they, they should have some more humor in some of these soap operas. That would actually make me watch them, I, I think. And anyway, so, I mean, I did, you did send me a clip, but I wasn't able to, to download that for the, uh, for the soap. But we do have some clips of your newer material. And talk about humorous, okay? Uh, the, the original um, clip you sent me, actually, you sent me the, whole, the link to the whole uh, short film, uh, was called Meet the Author. I was, I was right. in hysterics. That was very funny to me. Uh, and Thank I want to play the, tea, uh, the trailer for that, if you don't mind, so we can give people a little sure. a bit of a background on you. So this was, uh, the Meet, the, Meet the Author was out, uh, what, a couple of years ago? Uh, when was that produced? A couple of years ago, we finally dropped it on YouTube. Uh, it's on YouTube right now on my channel, Blackwood Productions. And I'd love everybody to, to watch the whole thing. But yeah, let's watch the Okay, so we're going to watch the trailer, and we'll come right back with uh, Steve. So here we go. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm more of what you call a uh, mid-list writer. Is this the line? I kind of assumed there'd be a line. I know yeah, I'm not I crazy stalker, waited. lady, I swear. No, I have been blue. In the book world, you strike when the iron is hot. Exactly. Iron is cold, Marvin. It's unplugged. You couldn't press a hanky with Why it. Do we spend money. I'm so Shh, you. No one does those love scenes exactly like I write, you. don't you understand? I don't know how to do anything else. You made me feel so grand. I got to. I once dated a guy who was totally into brewing his own ginger ale. His whole you world was a stupid understand. hobby. Who even likes ginger ale? This little scheme, I'm scheming and a dream. I'm they like you, baby. They like you a lot. We're back. True, she meant. For some Writing is significant. It's not smacking lips. With the fiery passion of a supernova. Yes, as a matter of fact. A pew. You're kidding, right? Is that kind of like a deal breaker? For someone exactly like you. Mom is getting exactly like you. Mom is getting hot exactly like you. Okay, that was pretty funny, Steve. I, I mean, I, I, I do encourage everybody to go to your YouTube channel and watch yeah. the whole thing. It's about 20 minutes, correct? Right. Yeah, nice. that's good. Now, did that hit the festival circuit too? Um, that hit the festival circuit. We were in about 10 festivals. We won three awards. We Great. won best, best uh, comedy here in, uh, at the Scene Festival in Rhode Island. So, And I've got a new one out called Stuck, which is in, in 20, 22 festivals, and it's, it's winning all kinds of awards. And I'm just, I'm just thrilled because, Michael, what I've done now is that I used to do the Days of Our Lives, and I had to, I had to make do with the soap opera writing and all that. But now I get a chance to write my own material and perform in it and act in it and direct it and write it and produce it. And it just it just gives me so much creative freedom that I've I've just never been more happy in my life than I am right now, creatively. Excellent. Actually we're gonna watch the trailer for Stuck in a little bit, okay? okay uh, and that and what uh, what festivals are you are you uh, do you have stuck at right now? I have oh my god, we had stuck at New York International, Houston Comedy Festival. Boston International, um, Solaris in Cannes, France. Um, so it's international as well. Uh, we're got a. I, I wish I had my list in front of me, but festivals like that, and I, and I mean really good festivals. In fact, we just a, a guy from uh, the Golden State Comedy Festival in Los Angeles called me, and they're not only going to have our our movie at their festival, but they're going to show it at the uh, the old Grauman's. Uh, Chinese theater. You remember that, Mike? The, yeah, uh, yeah, I do. You know, Grauman, now they call it TLC or something it was like that. TLC was man's for a little while, too. Yeah. Actually, our next guest will probably know the the, the, the lineage yeah. of the uh, the Chinese theater. He's, he spent a lot of time in L.A. Uh, Tim will probably talk about that a little later. Uh, Mike, you had a question? I do. So when you are done with the movie and you get it out and it's it's out there and it's it's in the public eye, how does it get picked for all these festivals? Do you have to audition it? Does it just get seen by somebody and they submit it? How does that work? That's a really good question. Um, it, you're Mike, right? Yes. He's Mike. You're Mike. You're both. Yeah, Mike, Mike times two. 
<laughs> um, they have a thing on the internet on uh, called the uh, Film Freeway, and all the uh, independent uh, producers and directors put their movies on Film Freeway, and all the festivals are on it too. So you submit directly to Film Freeway. So it's like a one-stop shopping sort of thing. I mean, you have to come up with, for instance, if you had, if you wanted to get into Sundance, it would cost you like 150 bucks. Mm -hmm. And Sundance is on Film Freeway, and even the small festivals where there's only $25 is on Film Freeway. Wow. So everything goes on Film Freeway, and that's how uh, people look at your work, and 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 you have, that's how you submit your film to these festivals. Yeah, during uh, the, the break between. Uh days of our lives and you start doing the short films what were you doing to keep busy were you, were you always want to do short films or were you always, always. so i'm sorry what was that again i said i was homeless homeless oh it's hard to do my jokes when you can't hear me <laughs> i'm sorry yeah it's the skype connection it's a little it's a little difficult i'm sorry um but yeah so what i did was i to make a long story short i went to uh uh you know certain cities have film incentives where you can make movies and Hollywood comes to your city like Boston does now. Mm -hmm. A lot of films uh, here in Boston, Hollywood films, and they come to Boston. Well, in Michigan, my hometown, they had a film incentive. So I went back after they killed me off. I went back to Michigan, back home. And, and I did eight movies when I was there. Uh, Machine Gun Preacher with Gerard Butler, uh, a movie with Ed Helms. Uh, Cedar Rapids and all these things were happening and then they took the film credits away film incentive away and then my wife said well I'm from Nashua New Hampshire and I always wanted to go back home so we said all right we moved from Detroit so we went we were in LA we moved we went to Detroit and then we ended up moving to here in beautiful Newburyport Massachusetts beautiful location up there yeah it's 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 great but but the bottom line is that once they cut the film incentives there wasn't any more movies for me to do in Michigan, and now the movies are here. And um, but but here I didn't want to. Are are you an actress as well, um, Jules? I she should not. be, right? <laughs> well, Jules, I don't know if you've been on shows. Maybe Tim will know when she comes on. But uh, but they give you like extra parts. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or a couple of lines if you're lucky. And. With my background, I didn't want to do that. So I, I decided, you know what? I'm not going to make a living make doing extra work or one-line things. I want to create my own product. And that's why I started doing the short films that you're talking about. Meet the Author and Stuck. That's awesome. And a few others. Yeah, so I decided to, you know, take the situation that I had, uh, lemons, and make lemonade. If there you, you will. go. Yeah. Speaking of uh, lemonade, why don't we take a look at your lemonade now? We'll take a look at the trailer for Stuck, and we can discuss that. So here is the trailer for Stuck, which is now out in the film festivals, yeah. and uh, let's enjoy this now. Love trap. So you're not going to be using it tonight. Yeah, no, I don't think so. This is my last stop, so I have time to set it up for you. No, no. delivery guy stuck in a giant sex contraption in our bedroom. You're not going to have your clients see this. Unconscious or not, we are getting him out of that thing and the hell out of here. Right. 15 minutes, George. Right. Okay, now, slather up. You slather up his ring. No, no, no. Wait, oh, no, wait, no. Look at his face. Look at his face. what is that? How can you be allergic to olive oil? Okay. <laughs> nice. Olive oil, huh? All right. It smells smell like a Greek salad when he gets finished out of that. Um, so, did you, uh, I'm sorry, did you come up with the concept uh, for this uh, movie yourself? This is what I want to make sure that, the, that your viewers know is that on Meet the Author and on the Stuck movie, um, both of them were one act plays written by this wonderful playwright named David Sussman. What I did was I, I uh, made them into movies. For instance, in Meet the Author, it was just two characters. And uh, I hear music. Yeah, there's a little uh, background from music while we're talking. Go ahead, don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, and and, uh, 
and so there were one act plays and I added characters and I, I made them movies uh, and uh, where they were just you know really sweet wonderfully written funny one act plays but I made them into like more of a film story both of them so I have to thank my co-author meet the author David Sussman Very good. for the in inspiration for these these two movies I'm writing a screenplay now which is all mine is an original uh, and a full length but right right now I give uh, half the credit at least to uh, David Sussman uh, who lives in Maine and is a wonderful writer and uh, and is a sweet guy too I actually have a question. So you, with the teaming up of, you know, the the playwriter for both of these pieces, yeah. how do you find your actors doing this small production wise? How do you end up picking from a... How do you cast? How do you cast? Yeah. You know how I cast? I cast through my classes, my mm. acting that I, I teach in Newburyport and I've taught at Michigan State when I was there and all, all over the country. But I get my uh, talent from uh, the actors that I teach in Boston. And also on the last one, you know, if there if there's a specific role that, that they couldn't fill, I went out to Los Angeles and found this wonderful actress that you just saw, Sandy Bainham, the blonde. And she was on Broadway in 42nd Street uh, recently. And she was wonderful in it and couldn't have been a better a better partner. So with this internet, with this COVID thing, you know, I can I can I can go around the country and, and meet people now and find actors and they'll come in from Sandy came in from LA, some some will come in from New York. So I have the Boston actors for the most part and meet the author, but now I'm I'm wor I'm working with actors from all over the country. Excellent, excellent. So how's how's COVID been to you as far as uh you know your business and and uh, do you have getting ugh, sorry have been getting a lot of casting notices or just a, a little bit what's what's been going on well there's no no one would go to auditions because of of covid you know um mm. and i used to teach live and now i don't i teach uh i teach the students on facetime okay and so, it's I miss i miss people don't you guys yeah we do i mean we actually you don't see it in the in the cameras here but we actually get plexiglass all between us here so we, we try to be as covid as covid careful as possible I'm in, a, I'm in a really tight pod here with my wife and uh -huh. daughter they don't want me to go into a store i got it yeah. i got it yeah the older you the older we are the little tougher it is for us we yeah. have to be a lot more careful at that yeah. at our age and I, you know exactly so that that's where i'm at right now and so i i miss people a lot and yet on the other hand i've been able to write 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 i wrote three one act plays and this and i'm working on this original story about my acting life and my crazy family in detroit and um uh, it it made me just write a whole bunch of things that i can't wait to start doing once we get out of this mess that we're Excellent, Steve. Well, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, where can they find you online besides your YouTube? It's been a ball. Uh, you got you can find me at www.steveblackwood.com, my website. You can also go to Facebook and 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 friend me, and I will I will friend you. I will friend you, Jules, and I will friend you, Michael, the other Mike. And okay, I will great. Tim got. I will friend Tim too. Yeah, Tim. That's him. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll get Tim on right afterwards. You can stick yeah. around if you want, Steve, and uh, to keep keep watching. Well, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta run. I gotta, you know, my they want to they want to watch Downton Abbey. With oh, okay, me. no problem then. Duty calls. <laughs> was was that one of your jokes? <laughs> yes. <it was. laughs> he nailed it. I'm in trouble. <laughs> That's great. Well, Steve Blackwood, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Go Guys. check out his YouTube channel. Watch Meet the Author. It'll be a great 20 minutes of fun for you. Uh, and you can do that uh, on your way to the uh, the work uh, workplace if you're riding on the T, or if you just got uh, in the 20 minutes, you just want to laugh a little before going to bed at night. I highly recommend it. And I can't wait to see the full version of Stuck. When it's available unfortunately we're not we don't have any time to go any festivals these days but uh hopefully uh, that'll be available uh, shortly if that comes back on i'll come back and do the show uh, there yes. you go that's great i would love to that would that'd be awesome see you guys all right thank you very Bye. much steve we thank appreciate you. you dropping in okay so steve blackwood uh we're going to be right back after this and uh tim's probably got a lot more stories for us too to uh, enjoy and I'm, I'm sure he's got jokes as well jules so stay tuned we'll be right back <laughs>
Huh. They made this blackberry taste exactly like Brian. blackberry hint water. They made this watermelon taste like hint water too. How did you farmer sky. wizards make all this fruit taste just like hint water? Right here. Well, I did. We triple irrigate our fruit with hint water in the world's largest biosphere, yeah. which modifies no, 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 no. the DNA yeah, to no, taste no, exactly no, like no, hint no, water. Really? But you gotta stop. No. You're worse. Between you and Nicole, you're gonna go up. Hint. Water with a touch of true fruit flavor. It doesn't matter what it's slower fast. What to expect when you're expecting. Like you a teenager. Today I'm going to show you how to team proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. Ready for the mom. You don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. <laughs> Hi. Um, can I get the now bar, please? No problem. One dollar. Have a good one. Got it. Hi, can I get a now bar, please? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. One dollar. Thanks. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Hey, uh, let me get a now bar. Sure. One dollar. Appreciate you. You got it. How's it going? Can I get a now bar? Hey, stop right there! Get down on the ground! Out of your car right now! Show some respect. Show you give a damn. Show the world how it's done. Show them that when your community needed you the most, you showed up. Mask up, America. Okay, we're back in Performer Studios in Quincy. I got this nice smooth jazz here now because the guy coming up is smooth, okay? He's been around for a while. <laughs> He's loving this, right? Hey, thank okay, you. Okay, we're going to welcome Tim. Tim, welcome to Performer Studios. Yes. How are you this evening? I'm very smooth tonight. There you go. He's very smooth. Michael, yes, thank you. He's smooth, yeah. Well, actually, we're going to show you some smoothness in a little bit. I, I, I think um, you've been in the Me business. and Billy D. Williams, we're there smooth. Go. There you go. Like malt liquor. <laughs> yes. Nice. What is it, Colt 45? Colt 45. Nice. Oh, there you Thank go. you. We're, we're, they don't know what the hell we're talking about. <laughs> oh, I know. You do. Oh, you know Colt 45, but you have Billy D. Williams used to be the spokesman for Colt 45, and he did these very debonair uh, commercials for the for the. It's like women would just melt. Uh, well, like all of that stuff yeah. that we reference now, you can just go to YouTube and see it. Right, like, you yeah. can. You can. That's true. You know, just so, put it in there. And then you're there for like two it's hours. All there. Indeed. Oh, it, my YouTube indeed. is the new. YouTube is the new Britannica. Mm -hmm. yeah. They don't even know what that means. Oh probably. Lord, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you reached way back way to that back. one. <laughs> way back. Encyclopedias. That, that, that. Remember when you used to get... Um, yeah, remember mm, when like every they had year. books? Yeah, yeah. yeah, they had books on shelves <laughs> and libraries. Well, when we, when we, we were young, we had... Was it like Cadillac card? Or, not well, Cadillac we used to have card. snow this high. We, no, we, we had to make our own paper. <laughs> so, Tim, you've been in the yes, business sir. for a while, too. How many years oh. have you been in this business? Oh, geez. I'd say all together, maybe 30 30. 30 years doing 30 years. Uh, a lot of television and radio and even doing some newspaper stuff uh, when I first moved to this area up in Nashua, New Hampshire. So, yeah, I've just enjoyed the broadcasting business ever, si ever since I was a kid. I, uh, my, my mom has this photo of me at about 10 years old with a, a box on my head and a little cutout in it oh. with me wanting to be on television. Wow. So I nice. truly knew early I wanted yeah. to do this. That sounds like, like yes. something I did too. When yes. I was when I was twelve years old, uh, I had a CB base station radio that was like for kids, uh -huh. and I would have my next door neighbor come down, and we would play stuff on cassette tape and make broadcasts. Yep. Nobody heard it, but we were still broadcasting over the air, and that was my first. But actually, at fourteen, I started uh, interning at a radio station, so I started really, really early. So I've been doing it for an um, umpteen number of years, uh, more than umpteen. But what was the studio? Uh, the W. 
KYFR was the name of the radio station. It was Your Family Radio. Uh, and actually, it was short wave. And when I say short wave, people don't like, what the hell is that? But let me put it this way. Um, they were broadcasting to 100 countries around the world, and their transmitters were three, four million watts. Now, put that in perspective. WBZ is 50,000 watts. Wow. So the transmitters were yeah. huge transmitters, uh, generating a lot of um, radiation. If you went out near the antennas and had anything metal on you, it would burn you. <laughs> oh, great. Okay? That, that's how, that's how, that's well, how this powerful this explains a lot. Yes. <laughs> mm. That's how powerful the transmitters were. That's so, yes, crazy. that was my first uh, foray into radio broadcasting. I loved it ever since. Yeah, well, in high school, they had these uh, things in the morning. They had a, what's called an AV club or an audiovisual club. Yeah. You know, I mean, they got them now still. But everybody was in a competition to try and do the morning announcements in home. There you go. Yeah. In, in homeroom. So you know, I was competing. And I was like, hey, I'm practicing my radio voice. And uh, well, Mrs. Smith isn't isn't going to be in class today. <laughs> but um, uh, we have spaghetti and meatballs and yogurt for the lunch menu. And oh, yeah, so yeah. yeah. So you got you it started early there. on too. Oh, thank you. All right, so we're going to see some of Tim's work uh, being an interviewer, uh, and then we'll, we'll we'll critique you, Tim, and see how oh, thanks. see how well you've <laughs> see how far you've come since the days nice. of no pressure. broadcasting over the PA at school. <laughs> All right, so hold on, let me get my act together here. I'm trying to run a show and talk at the same time. All right, here's oh, Tim. Man. Here's Tim in action. Enjoy, folks. Hi, everybody. I'm Tim Estilos here in Los Angeles for The Spiel with Entertainment. And I'm here with esteemed Oscar-winning actor Morgan Freeman to talk about his new film, London Has Fallen. First of all, it's a pleasure to talk with you. Eddie, first of all, congratulations on getting this role and doing such a phenomenal job with it. Thank you. You must be very proud. Hi, everybody. I'm Tim Estilos with The Spiel on Entertainment, coming to you from the red carpet screening of the new film, Spotlight, the story of a group of dedicated journalists who expose the truth about one of the most explosive scandals ever in the city of Boston. Mark, first of all, Hi, welcome back to Boston. Again, good good seeing you as well. Great job in this film. I've got to ask you, when this story came across your attention, what was the first thought that came to your mind when you saw the script? Hi everybody, I'm Tim Estilos with The Spiel on Entertainment and I'm here with actors Mackay Pfeiffer and Maggie Q who are starring in the new upcoming film Divergent, coming to a theater near you. First of all, welcome to Boston. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Now, you are starting in this film that is based on an incredibly popular series of young adult novels. Mm -hmm. So one of those trilogies, Absolutely. a la Hunger Games, but different. How exciting or challenging is this for you to take this on? Hi everybody, I'm Tim Estilos with The Spiel on Entertainment and I'm here with the actors from the new film London Has Fallen, Gerard Butler and Angela Bassett. It's a pleasure to meet you both. Thank you. You, you know, are. I love the film. One of the things I enjoyed about this film was that the character development is much more profound than the last film, as well as the relationship between you and both of you and also with the president. Tell me, did you enjoy that aspect, that improvement, if you will? Okay, that was pretty cool, Dude, Tim. Where did you get all that video? <laughs> I'm smart. I know where to look. How does it feel to go from Morgan Freeman to Jules? <laughs> Why well, I've I've traded up. There you go. Oh, there good go. answer. Hey, okay. You know, Jules didn't we, raise no fool. <laughs> <laughs> I am blown I, I, away. I haven't right even now. seen some of that stuff in a while. Really? Like, okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. I like to fish you, things out like that. You, Trust you me. You do. I do my homework. Yeah. I mean, how 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 did you hack into my computer? Actually, <laughs> I have I have ways. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I indeed. do have ways. That was very. I've scary. got lots of spies out there. <laughs> <laughs> Through the whole broadcast, so that he was, was sitting here. That going, was super impressive. Yeah. Tim. I, I was, oh, thank you. Yeah. I, I, I'm still blown away. I was like, dang, man. <laughs> I, I know you were just going to show the demo reel. It's like, oh, nope. yes. no, no I'm, I'm happy. Thank yeah, you. No, that's that's uh, amazing. And uh, you feel very, you look very comfortable talking to people like that. And that's that's how, that's the trick, folks. you got to be comfortable. You, you can't be starstruck in a situation like that. No. They, they'll sniff it out, just like dogs sniff out fear, yeah. you know. And uh, they want you to be comfortable. Talk to them. Have a conversation. Yeah, well, I, I at first I was worried about, you know, know uh, 
being too nervous and and but after a while as you said they just you know want you to talk to them and be just talk to them as if you're having a, a drink with most of them i mean there's some that put on some airs but for the most part if you come in and you say something at the beginning that uh, makes them feel comfortable or even ask them something about a hobby that they have or whatever they they tend to open up and then it, it makes for a nice comfortable interview yeah people don't understand though when you do an interview like that there's a bunch of reporters lined up to come in they have like what five, five ten minutes not even that not even that sometimes yeah. right exactly so unfortunately for the actors that are on these uh on these uh PR junkets, uh, they have to answer the same questions over and, and over, over and over and again. Over. So you have to kind of make yourself a little bit unique in, in your approach. And uh, you, you have to ask the basic questions, obviously. Oh, yeah. Like you know? pre-COVID, the way it was set up is that usually they'd uh, have these at the Four Seasons in uh, Los Angeles. Not a bad place to go. Nope. You know, and they'd, they'd fly a bunch of journalists, maybe 40 or 50, in, and we would also get to stay at the, at the same hotel. But when they do these interviews that you see like the ones you saw I me just do or let's say on entertainment tonight or extra there they have various um, hotel rooms for each particular star with a setup like we have here two cameras and whatnot and all the reporters are waiting in the hallway for their time to go in and meet uh, Morgan Freeman for example so you step in you sit down you say hi how you doing they say speed and you've got basically actually around four minutes oh, wow. to do the interview so you got to have everything you know really really thought out and and ready to go because if you screw up well then they say go to the next person and as you were saying Mike it's a revolving door one reporter comes in the next one sits down they do their thing and yeah you try and come up with something that's very interesting maybe something that they don't expect out of their past not something bad but something that will make them laugh like i i anticipated us talking about this and you know i, I remember when i was interviewing kate winslet one time and i i was doing some research and i found that kate winslet once sang a duet with weird al yankovic oh <laughs> no many many years ago so you, you know I'm, I'm asking her about her movie and then i said well i i i i, I want to ask you about you know, did you do? A, I heard you did a an interview with, we, uh, rather, uh, sang a duet with Weird Al Yankovic, and she just tilted her head back, laughing, going, ha! and she just lost it mm -hmm. because That's she didn't crazy. think anybody would um, would remember that. Would or remember find that, it. and it yeah. just loosened her up even more. So you know that's the trick to it: find something that will kind of break the ice. Right, just make yourself unique, and people like remember that. you. Mm -hmm. So, and also, if you're doing a red carpet, and a lot of people don't know this either, there's probably dozens of cameras and reporters lined up along the red carpet, and they have to. It's like a, it's like a, a uh, what do you call it? A gauntlet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to go down there and you have to see each one of them. Mm -hmm. talk to each one of them so it's, it's almost the same thing but it's even more chaotic oh very yeah. competitive very much so. too because all, all the reporters are lined up you know shoulder to shoulder with each other and as the stars come down they don't always talk with everybody they have a publicist to run interference for them and they're looking for maybe the best outlet for their star to, to talk with and also if you ask the wrong question the publicist will jump right in and say this interview's over so you know you're like hollering uh uh denzel denzel you know and and trying to get their attention and uh again you've got maybe two questions that you get to ask unless you're like ryan seacrest or somebody with e or something like that right the, wow. the, the, the higher up you are yeah. of course the higher up the food chain right mm -hmm. the more the more clout you have exactly but it, it's fun to do it yeah. so i i gotta ask, have you ever had somebody i don't want to say hijack the interview but you ask the question and then just run in such a direction that you have to follow yeah yeah <laughs> I, th I think uh, the example of that that happens most of the time is that you know again you have that four minutes maybe <laughs> right maybe five but usually four minutes and you ask your first question and they'll spend the next three minutes <laughs> answering that question and you don't want to cut the star off yeah. uh, but you're thinking you know i gotta ask one other question in here i just can't have my whole interview be one continuous answer so and usually the publicist is in the back saying wrap it up wrap it up wrap it up uh we usually ignore them <laughs> and say well just one more question one more question yeah. then they look at you like they want you to drop dead <laughs> but you at least get that one other question in there <laughs> okay yeah. That's good. Cool. Well, who's your favorite? I mean, you've interviewed a lot of people. Who's your favorite? Well, let's say, who's your favorite and who are the one you were most impressed with? Hmm. 
I'd say, let's see. The one, I had two interviews with Robert Downey Jr. That's and sick. one was when he wasn't doing so well. He was, you know, still having some of his drug problems and yeah. so forth. And he was in this film called The Shaggy Dog. And it's a Disney film and whatnot. We love Disney, by the way. We love Disney. Disney is, is king. <laughs> we'll, we'll, um, we'll be talking about that in a second. Yeah. Yes. Um, but he just wasn't having it. He wasn't digging the, the whole being in the film. And he was like, you know, a, a hostile interview, so to speak. So I'm like, you know, I really loved you in this film, uh, Chaplin, where he won an Academy Award. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about a movie that I was in like five years ago. Fine. And I'm like, okay, maybe he's having a little fun with me. Yeah. And the next question I ask has something to do with when he was on for a short time with Saturday Night Live. Oh, yeah. Talk about this show that I hated being on. So I was like, this, this, I'm just dying here with his interview and uh i found out you know he was just miserable mm -hmm. because he hated this film and his personal life wasn't going well fast forward to when he's uh gets the role for iron man and you know he had been to prison he had you know gotten out he had cleaned up his life and he was so excited to have this gig and so this time around he was just you know doing everything he could to make the interview go right but genuinely sincerely so this was a guy who was like really really grateful to get a second chance and he was just a delight to talk to that's, um, that's so awesome sick. yeah Meryl Streep was cool too good yeah <laughs> yeah I mean yeah, yeah. You, you, <laughs> hello well, <laughs> well here's the thing can I tell one sure, more yeah, story about her? yeah please is that not in the way you might immediately think so, again, we come into the room, and you sit down, and you're like, All right, how do you do, Miss, Miss Streep? It's, I really enjoyed the movie. And I tried to think of something to, again, break the ice, so I knew it was her birthday in a couple of days. So I said, well, happy birthday to you in a couple of days. Oh, thank you. Well, and when's your birthday? And I said, well, my birthday's not for a while, but, you know, my, my mom's birthday's in a couple of days. And at that point, the cameraman over her shoulder says, all right, and speed. He wants the interview to start. And so I start saying to, well, just before I, he did that, I said, my mom's interview, my mom's birthday is coming up. Oh, really? And how old will she be? And that's when he interrupted. And she holds up her hands and she looks around and she says, no, no. I'm not finished talking to Tim about his mother. Oh, no. <laughs> Ooh, no so the cameraman's looking at me again like he just wants to rip out my heart <laughs> and feed it to his dog uh, because he's been chastised by Meryl Streep. So she says, go ahead and continue. So I, as I'm watching him, <laughs> you know, I, I, I tell her more about the birthday. And she says, will you wish your mom a very happy birthday from me? And then she turns and says, all right, I'm ready to start now. Aww. And I That's just thought story. that was way so, cool. Wait, was awesome. it a pool cameraman? Uh, it was, it, well, they had, uh, it was a two camera shoot usually where it's okay. one over my shoulder and one over her shoulder. Uh, it was a company that they had hired out of Yeah, so, so it was a pool. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. A pool means they just have one crew. Oh, for yes. The whole, yes, that's, mm -hmm. a, that's what a pool camera is. Thank okay, you, sir. Cool. Yeah, there you go. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to educate all the, uh, the folks that don't know the business out there. Uh, we yeah, appreciate there that. Go. There you go. <laughs> Uh, Jules, you want to be a reporter someday, right? Yes. Sure, sure, you sure. do? Um, sure. Well, oh. <laughs> sure, uh, yes. <laughs> I do uh, now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, last actress. segment, I was going to be an actress. Yeah, <laughs> yes. actress, reporter, whatever. Well, yeah, yes, I mean, you, last awesome. last segment, you were an actress, now you're a reporter. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we're, we're trying to steer you in these directions right here. <laughs> uh, so now, what's going on with you now, Tim? Because I know you're doing some movies. Uh, and uh, actually, I'm going to show you this one screen. This This is from a recent movie. Um, here we go. There's Tim right there. Uh, this is the movie Godmothered. I have no secrets from you. <laughs> yes. This is from the movie Godmothered. Dang. And you, oh, well, you're playing a news anchor. That's a stretch. Yes, yeah, uh, really. <laughs> hey, the, the paycheck cash, you there know. There you go. That's all. Yeah. Uh, and that was actually filmed here in Boston as well. So, and you can see it now okay. on Disney+. Plus. That's right. Disney. It just yes. came out on Disney+, oh, Plus. what, about a month yes, ago? We, we love Disney. You can that's, see it. It came oh, out about now. a month ago. Yes. I, I watched it. And just seeing the scenes of Boston were kind of cool. I, I don't know why, though, but they chose a Chelsea location... <laughs> for the television station. That's I was like, so yeah, that's not the best place for a TV station uh, in the area, but that's okay. It was probably easy for you to get to. Oh, and, yeah. Well, as our, yeah. our guest, last guest was saying, there's so many uh, TV shows yes. and movies being yeah. filmed here yes, right now. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And even even during the COVID uh, period here, yeah. uh, they've still been coming to Boston, which is great. They get that big one mm -hmm. with Leonardo Leo. DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence right oh, now. Yeah. But they're uh, testing everybody. You have to go in for a COVID test. Yes. And, and so forth. But uh, the 
the Godmothered and another one that's coming out called Shrine with, uh, um, oh, good grief, uh, Dean Morgan from, Jeffrey Dean Morgan oh. from Walking Dead. That was a horror film that they uh, shot here, and that should be coming out pretty soon, too. But they, we finished those just before the COVID lockdown. Wow. So, you know, we got it in just under the wire. That's got unbelievable. Lucky. Yes. Yeah, I, I would have to say, if, if you watch that, don't worry, Tim is not mute. Uh, <laughs> but he just he just, he just just stands there and looks, or sits there and looks pretty so oh, throughout funny. the whole entire... <laughs> yeah, that was the weirdest thing. I was like, I was, was hired as, as a principal actor, you know, mm -hmm. in the credits and so forth. But I, I just had to, you know, just uh, smile at my co-anchor. And, and and look at her like this, and all the all the other actors and extras are saying, "Aren't they going to give you a line?" I said, "No, they just got me to sit here and 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 look, 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 professional, hey, suave and debonair." Sign me you up. Did, I you did get a lot of camera time, awesome. though. You did oh, get a lot. Of, uh, you've been in Gone Baby Gone. Name some of your other movies that you've been in. Uh, Gone Baby Gone. This upcoming one called Shrine. A couple of. Uh, TV pilots back in the day, a um, uh, couple of scenes in a film called Central Intelligence with The Rock. Love and, that one. Um, uh, uh, Kevin Hart. Oh, Kevin, thank Kevin you, Hart. Kevin yeah. Hart. <laughs> uh, also filmed in Boston. Yeah. Did some a lot of work as an extra on Patriots Day, uh, wow. but kind of featured. So, yeah, a lot of different ones there. And uh, Actually, during the, uh, during the interview, uh, you told them you were an extra in the movie, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I saw that... Uh, on the red carpet as well. Yeah, the the one that was uh, cool with uh, Gone Baby Gone, uh, Ben Affleck was the director on that one, and he had a bunch of actors just sort of ad lib their lines, and so they said, "All right, well, where's my where's my real reporter?" And uh, he just told what that last scene was going to be about in general and he just said here's a hot mic just ad lib what you'd normally do because I used to work as a news reporter before I before I left the dark side and came to entertainment reporting <laughs> sweet yes that's cool so yeah what, what made you go from uh, regular standard news to entertainment uh, I always liked entertainment reporting actually and and the entertainment business but the jobs in that are few and far between there I mean there's plenty of them but there's a big pool of people that want to get them so to break into television uh i ended up working as a, as a news reporter straight news reporter for the newspaper and then radio and so forth so the first job i could get was working as a news reporter and you know it gave me a good background but i didn't like what i'll call chasing the ambulances because a lot of the stories you know, every day we're either, you know, I mean, they're far more than this. I don't mean to disparage any of my colleagues in any way. They're hardworking people. But, you know, you'd cover a lot of tragedy fires or or um, a car wreck or some politician and so forth. And I wanted to do something a little more creative. So um, after I did about three years of that and there was there was a, a mutual parting of the ways between us. Uh, and there used to be an entertainment reporter here in town by the name of Sarah Edwards. And uh, they were starting a show on the Comcast network here. And she said, Tim, why don't you, you know, come work for us on that? And I haven't looked back since. It's a lot more fun. And that's excellent. I can, I yes, can Sarah, sleep at night. Sarah Edwards uh, and um, what was it? On Evening Magazine. Yep. Mm -hmm. on, uh, on uh, Barry Nolan. Barry Nolan, right. Barry Nolan. On WBZ and Joyce Cole Hayward, too. Mm -hmm. there, she was there. Don't forget before. Dixie Watley on Channel Dixie 5. Dixie Watley. Wow, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> a little nostalgia going on here. <laughs> We're broadcast people. Yes. So we, 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 uh, we appreciate the people that came before us. Test, you one, know, two. There, test, there you go. Test, that's right. Test. Exactly. Just an actress Jack, every Mike year, Check, so. Stone Phillips, Mike Check. I'm Jeff. just an actress, she says. <laughs> that it. plays golf. I, I'm, I'm amazing. And it, on weekends, she does reporting. I do. Yes. With triple with his darling little and accent. Just one other <laughs> side note for Jules. She's a pizza aficionado. Oh, give me the pizza. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and pizza, what did you do for pizza day last week? What'd you what'd you have? I had a heart shaped pizza. Oh that's right, yeah. yeah. Valentine's pizza. It was amazing. That, oh. That's your I'm, love. Right now do you there. like movies? Uh, uh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa. <laughs> Excuse me, it just got dark from the shade I just got hit with there a second ago. Well, I gotta tell the movie guy I like movies. Well, yeah, well, yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm, yeah, you're Play along true. with me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's I love everything. Like, yeah. uh, movies, TV. Uh, well, I mean, a lot of people have been watching. Netflix has really done a lot of great has. quality well, he, content Netflix lately. and chill. Next week, yeah, well, if, at least Netflix. I don't, well, here's the, chill, the thing the right chill now. Is, the chill is gone. Uh, COVID, COVID <laughs> has really messed up the movie experience. Yeah. 
because it's yeah, for me it's yeah. just it's not unless you are one of these people who have a giant screen TV at yeah, home which I don't I mean. <laughs> Same. um you know, it, there's nothing that can beat the experience of being in a theater yeah. and seeing, you know, that those big images and even sharing the experience with an audience. Mm -hmm. So, but right now, pe you know, people are either afraid or concerned or being safe to not go to the theaters. And I'm, I'm hoping that we get back to that because the experience that we're having now, not everybody is seeing a lot of the films that came out this year yeah yeah they've been they've been kind of holding back on a lot of yeah. stuff you know, i mean the james way. bond uh top gun 2 mm -hmm. all those films have been held back right now so well, it's kind of cool uh, that cool too to see them in, hopefully in the future on the big screen but a positive yeah. note all the creative juices are flowing right now mm -hmm. people are writing so hopefully later we'll be able to yeah, but the, the, they're still going to have the Oscar ceremonies, but I imagine... A month later, though. Yeah, but still, I think uh, a lot of the general public are going to see a lot of the films that are nominated, and they won't have seen them all because we have them on all these different platforms. Yeah. You've got Hulu, you've got Netflix, you've got Apple TV, you've got... Amazon. Um, Amazon. And a lot of people left cable I did. to... To save money. Now it's going the opposite direction. Yeah. So I mean, you know, who can afford to have six or seven or more uh, streaming channels? You might as well go back to cable because right, you're exactly. spending all that money. Yeah. HBO. You've got CBS, Paramount now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this, it's getting a little crazy out there. Uh, somebody's going to come along and say, "We're going to package them all together." So basically, you've just gone full circle. Yeah. Yeah. You just except yeah. one. One was a cable delivery. Now it's the internet delivery. Indeed. You know, yeah. I do. I do predict that probably within the next. Um, I'd say 10 years, over-the-air television will probably be defunct uh, because very few people are getting over-the-air television anymore. Mm -hmm. I, it, it's still there, but I'd say probably one, maybe two percent of people get their television over the air now like they used to do yeah. back in the day. So they'll probably get rid of that because they need the bandwidth that these over the air television stations and radio stations are using for the communications, for cell communications now. Everyone's got uh, Wi-Fi and LTE and 5G. You, got, you, you need the bandwidth for that, those, spec, uh, those uh, uh, devices now. So they're going to start transitioning probably the next decade. And then cars too. Cars are going to be more... Uh, communicative with other platforms as well. And you'll have a flat screen TV on yeah. the front dash. But you can yeah. watch it because... You can watch it because we're, we're self-driving cars. Autopilot. Flying, right. flying cars. Yes, yes indeed. Flying cars? Well, maybe not yet. There's George Jetson. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right, exactly. Oh, yes. Uh, so, Tim, what's uh, what's in your future? <laughs> um, well, let's see. We have uh, a couple of interviews coming up. A lot of the interviews that are being done now, uh, right, and it may be the wave of the future, is a lot of Zoom interviews. I can't say which ones it is just yet That's until okay. we have them. Uh, put together auditioning for uh, a couple of films they're doing zoom auditions now yeah. so there's that um, I do some work drawing for some kids at Boston Children's Hospital yeah I saw the drawings so yeah. I, I didn't put artist in there but I was I was saying maybe <laughs> I should put artist in there too as well but yeah the drawings were kind of cool too basically I can't hold a job well <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I get bored easily and where can people find you online uh, you know the, the first thing I can say is just google my name Tim Estilos, E-S-T-I-L-O-Z, but I'm on YouTube. You can see a lot of my celebrity interviews on YouTube by putting in my name. I'm on Twitter under my name, as well as uh, on Instagram. On Facebook, you can look me up at Tim Estilos Film Reviews and also Tim Estilos Art. And uh, yeah, basically, I think the best way to market oneself is to just put your name Google there. Me. And uh, building or rejiggering my new website as well. Mm, but uh, cool. again, Google my name, you'll see all kinds of stuff. But you seem to find the really interesting <laughs> stuff yeah, I know. that I didn't know existed. I'm creepy so. like that. Yeah, I'm creepy yeah. like that. What can I say? That whole reel, he was just looking yes. over at me like, like, where did he find this stuff? <laughs> I'm stalking you, Tim. Yes. Well, I've, I've had plenty of practice. We, 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 we've only been trying to connect and get you on the show for uh, nine months now. Uh, yeah, this is true. Please have me back. But I hope I haven't yeah, scared your audience. Last time you were actually begging, weren't you? <laughs> it's like, I, I'm sorry, but I have to, what was it, to London, I think, was? Well, I felt so You had to go so to London bad. once or something? Yes. yes. Oh. Yeah. That there, sounds fun. There truly was. You tried like four times. <laughs> yes, I and did. And every time, something happened that day. Uh, and, yeah. Oops. Although, although the first time you, the first time you started it by canceling on me i did yeah are we sure it wasn't alberto let's, let's blame him yeah let's blame yeah. him let's blame <laughs> no, actually that's that's the first time i met you when we did a we did a skype show 
Oh, that with, one, with El yes. Mundo, yeah. That was fun with his with his sister uh, Maria. Right, exactly. But you're here now. I'm here now. That was a, that was a yeah. movie show too. That yeah. was a movie show. Alberto gets enough airtime. We don't right, need to talk true. about him. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking. He's probably watching right now too. Yeah. I, I don't have the comments. So let's let's see if he Hi, let's see if he made any comments. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, no, nobody made any comments. <laughs> oh. So he's fine. not watching. He's not watching. Fine. Yeah. Well, he's, yeah. He said he was going to watch. He's looking in a mirror somewhere. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I got to play that back for him tonight. Definitely. I love you. Brother, <laughs> awesome! <laughs> All right, well, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you for coming down. Oh, we really pleasure. appreciate it. Yeah, I'd uh, love to do it again. Well, I, well hey, listen, the next movie you got coming out well, what's sounds a, like a plan. Sound, got to come back and show that one too. That'll be Shrine with Shrine. Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Carrie Elwes. I hope you can talk in that one. I play a reporter. Yes, I have lines. <laughs> Good. I have lines this you have time. Lines this time. Yes, that's great. And uh, who cashed for that one? Paradise or uh, uh, that was. Boston Castle? Um, CP what? That was Boston Casting on Boston that Casting? one. Boston Casting? And, uh, yeah, Boston Casting and CP Casting uh, got... CP Casting got me the shrine, actually, and Boston Casting got me Godmother. Nice. Oh, that's yes. excellent. That's really no, cool. flip those around. Oh, <laughs> flip them around, okay. CP Casting got me Godmother. <laughs> okay. Boston Edit. Casting got me shrine. Okay. I right. love them both. <laughs> Jules, take note. Because uh, yes. so, your acting future is... is yes. Are you, are you mm-hmm. signed with any agency? Or uh, Maggie Inc. Maggie. They're right downtown in Boston. Downtown. Yep. yep. Right yeah. On Newbury Street. I mean, you know, an actor can actually have a a pretty good. I won't say a career. You won't make a living here, but you'll get a lot of credits for your resume in this mm-hmm. town. There's a there's several actors that have just gotten a lot of great roles uh, from some of the casting outlets here, and then they they take uh, a few of their their parts that they've uh, added to their resume, and then do quite well in Los Angeles or New York. Very good. Awesome. All right. Well, we're gonna have to wrap it up now. I know we started a little late, so we're gonna end a little late. But Tim, again, thank you for coming down and braving the braving the elements tonight. It's actually not that bad. Uh, awesome. Come on, y'all. It was fun bad. being with the two Michaels. That's and right. Also, of course, Jules. The lovely yes. Jules. The lovely Jules. That's, that's gonna be uh, out in the links very soon again. Yes. Okay. Uh, listen, uh, folks. Uh, it's gonna be snowing here in Boston, and we 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 hope that anybody <laughs> watching in Texas uh, stay oh, safe. Please. please. Uh, we know what it's yeah. like to be in a uh, frigid cold without power many uh, many times. We've uh, experienced that, but mostly stay off the roads down there. Mm-hmm. That's uh, that's really important, and actually here too. I mean, we've had a couple of icing situations around here, so stay safe, folks. And uh, you know, hey, uh, it's winter. What can you say? It'll be uh, what three and a half weeks till uh, daylight savings, Mike. Sure. There you go. All right, Mike's supposed to be my expert on that. Come on. We Mike. needed to hunt we down need... that groundhog out yes, in no Pennsylvania. Kidding. Yeah, that's right. You know, Punxsutawney. I mean, I'm from PA, but dang, that that rat's got to go. <laughs> That rat hey, has got to go. Hey, last year you said six months of six months of <laughs> like six uh, six uh, weeks. Six why, weeks. Why are we held yeah, hostage yeah, yeah. every winter by a big fat? But last rat. week, it, last yeah. winter it wasn't. So you predicted <laughs> spring early. So, all right, well, you got to take the good with the bad, right, folks? Uh, stay tuned again next week. Uh, we're going to be back with fun with food. Yes. Have some uh, great stuff. And uh, next week we also get uh, night moves coming in with some great guests too. So thanks to Tim, thanks to Steve Blackwood, and enjoy your night and have a great weekend, folks. Mm-hmm.